And in the end, they would prove that men could dominate the earth, though they had not guessed what the toll would be. Every day somebody gets hurt. A lot of men get killed too. In 1850, the difficulty of crossing Panama on foot prompts New York financiers to begin building a railroad. Right from the outset, the country resists civilization. Solid ground to build on is hard to find. Panama's terrain is a mixture of massive quicksands and swamps. Working conditions for railroad laborers are terrible. The country is cursed with disease and swarming with mosquitoes. And the men began to die. Of cholera, malaria, dysentery, fever, and smallpox. Diseases that seem to seep from the jungle without cause or cure. To put the big dig in perspective, it's larger than the Panama Canal. But those who were building the Panama Canal would not be stopped. They were undaunted by the forces of nature. And in the end, they would prove that men could dominate the earth, though they had not guessed what the toll would be. Every day somebody gets hurt. A lot of men get killed too. In 1850, the difficulty of crossing Panama on foot prompts New York financiers to begin building a railroad. Right from the outset, the country resists civilization. Solid ground to build on is hard to find. Panama's terrain is a mixture of massive quicksands and swamps. Working conditions for railroad laborers are terrible. The country is cursed with disease and swarming with mosquitoes. And the men began to die. Of cholera, malaria, dysentery, fever, and smallpox. The human cost is extraordinary. Legend has it that there is a dead man for every railroad tie between the Pacific and Atlantic coast. At least 6,000 people will die during the construction of the railroad, a number that will pale in comparison to what lay ahead. The Plan Canal route follows the line of the railroad. 30 miles slice through virgin jungle. 17 miles run through the rugged mountains of the Continental Divide. Only a few hundred men doggedly work their way through the undergrowth. Most are locals, black and Indian Panamanians. The razor sharp leaves slash their skin. Poisonous plants cause terrible rashes. But the machete men slowly part the jungle, inch by laborious inch. After three months of work, it begins to rain. It is as if the heavens opened up and the sky goes liquid. As suddenly as it begins, the rain stops and the jungle turns back into a steaming hothouse. The pattern repeats relentlessly for nine months. On January 20th, 1882, the digging begins in earnest. Three divisions began to work simultaneously all along the route. At sea level, the work is done by dredges, but in the uplands, it is a laborious process of pick, shovel, and wheelbarrow. The parting of Panama is being done by hand. Already, the French company is over budget, and they still don't know what to do with the unpredictable Chagras. The lowest point in the mountains the Calabra Cut should be the most promising path to follow, but it is made of solid rock. The highest elevation at Suez was 50 feet above sea level. Here it was 330 feet, and that translated into millions and millions of cubic yards of dirt to be removed. At Suez, you had mostly sand. 
He had rock and what was worse, mud. The mud was terrible here. The more you dug out, the more slid in. The same diseases that had plagued thousands of railroad workers are attacking canal laborers. 60 people die of disease in 1881. Most of them are killed by malaria. It is the most common disease on the isthmus. Malaria, from the Italian meaning bad air, is believed to emanate mysteriously from the human marshes. The assumption seems reasonable, since the cause of disease is not yet known. The sick are plagued by chills, followed by high fever and burning thirst. Quinine is not always an effective cure due to inconsistent doses. Too much can cause vomiting or deafness. A few scientists suggest that mosquitoes might carry disease, but their ideas are rejected. The miasma theory remains widespread. All the while, beautiful gardens surround the hospital. Hundreds of pottery dishes filled with water ring the trees to protect them from ants. Inside the hospital itself, the beds rest in pans of water for the same reason. But standing water is a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. Many patients are reinfected before they have a chance to get well. No known cure. In Panama, those stricken with the disease stand less than a 50% chance of survival. In 1882, 125 canal workers die. 420 follow the next year. In 1884, the number jumps to 1,200. The cost in human life during the nine years of French construction was 22,000 people. A token force of workers remains in Panama to retain building rights. In reality, the French are simply waiting to unload the canal company. In 1902, they find a buyer, Teddy Roosevelt, newly inaugurated president of the United States. He is certain Americans can achieve what the French could not. The, the Americans would ultimately dig out more than 230 million cubic yards of earth from the bed of the canal. Stevens is working up to 18 hours a day. He places orders for 100 steam shovels, 4,000 dump cars, and 28 dirt spreaders. The size of the labor force triples. And they would chant, and they'd all have the bar down, have the shoulder up against it. And a piece of one of them was something la di da di da. And when I say Panama, Colon, go down. And everybody would shove with the bar and move the piece of track maybe a foot. And they'd all pick up then, get all lined up again, go through the whole thing all over again. It would take them forever to move a piece of track. 26 years after the canal was begun, the United States still doesn't know what kind of canal it is building, sea level or lock. This time, it is a man who will follow orders, Colonel George Gothels of the United States Army. Gothels knows how to instill loyalty and promote efficiency. He runs the isthmus like a military camp. Life and work are strictly controlled. The man. The once peaceful canyon is a deafening inferno. Crews are digging, dredging, and blasting 24 hours a day. But in 1909, crews also begin working on the single most impressive engineering feat of the entire enterprise the locks. They will be the largest concrete structures ever created, requiring four years and two million cubic yards of concrete to complete. To 
build the locks on the Atlantic side, spectacular cableways carry enormous buckets of concrete, holding nearly six tons each. The lock walls will be 1,000 feet long and higher than a six-story building. When a vote is taken on June 21, 1906, the Senate approves a lock canal. The Panama Canal would be a bridge of water, consisting of lakes, locks, and sea approaches. Ships entering from the Pacific would pass through a set of locks, which would lift the ship 54 feet to the level of a